Hey, what is up guys? So I'm sure you guys are wondering how the heck to beat Niklas if you're watching this video because the tournament reports are in and the deck is real like I mentioned before. Uh, this is definitely going to be a very strong deck and even after it gets hit it can still definitely be a strong deck unless they go ahead and ban out a few of the cards. But even after taking a relatively decent hit in the OCG by hitting a lot of different cards, the deck is still one of the most uh, tournament consistent decks to actually uh, be topping. But anyways, let's go and jump right into the uh, side deck choices. Now, first off, do you want to mention not every deck can run some of the cards we're going to be talking about because it might actually hurt your deck. But anyways, nonetheless, let's go ahead and jump right into it because we got a lot of cards to talk about. So first off, um, if you're playing maybe Trap Tricks, you haven't really bought another archetype. I felt like this card was kind of cool. It's Void Trap Hole. When your opponent would special summon a monster or special summon a monster with 2,000 or more attack, you get to negate the effects and then you actually get to destroy it, which is really cool. Um, there's also Swallow Flip, which essentially does the same thing, but it doesn't have that restriction on the amount of attack. Uh, this card used to be used against Gladiator Beast. It's kind of an older card. I think Void Trap will pretty much do the job. Uh, but nonetheless, they're basically going to be doing the same thing. Although Void Trap will technically can be better um, because uh, it doesn't actually have to activate the effect. Whereas Swallow Flip, um, it has to negate the activation of the effect monster uh, when a monster is special summoned. But uh, nonetheless, maybe if you don't happen to have uh, this card, you can just run Swallow Flip. But I think Void Trap Hole is just excellent because sometimes, even if you have like something like Torrential or something like that, or Bottomless, uh, the effect still goes off with some of the monsters and sometimes you just lose out on that. And it is, like I said, a card you can run in maybe Trap Tricks or something. Maybe if you still have that deck, but uh, next up, Vandy's Fiend and Majesty's Fiend. Overall, I think Vandy's Fiend is better uh, because you can just instantly win the game if they don't happen to have like Dark Hole or Regeki or something like a Book of Eclipse. But the deck definitely already main decks those to deal with that because of Mirror Match. So uh, this card, I feel like it's a little bit lackluster, but in the right scenario, if you maybe can somehow like Dark Bribe the Book of Moon or something like that, or just negate it, uh, you'll, be, you'll be good to go or just protect this through another means. But for the most part, if you can stop them from a special summon, you can win the game. Uh, so Vandy's Fiend can be good, but like I said, they already main deck outs to this card. Same thing with the False Dina, and then same thing with Majestic's Fiend. This card is overall better, but if you're playing a deck that can definitely make use of like Stormforth or something like that, um, you can definitely make use of these, some of these cards. Um, also, Fossil Dina is a really uh, strong card because you don't have to tribute. kind of like that aspect of Fossil Dina because it almost does the same thing in the deck uh, because most players do not actually play Dance Princess and if, and if they do, they'll play like one copy of it. But uh, nonetheless, uh, sometimes you can just win simply because a Fossil Dina is face up. Again, they already main deck out to this, so I don't find these to be as good as some other options. But if you're playing a deck that uh, can definitely get like free tributes, uh, then yeah. Or if you're playing a pendulum based deck and sometimes maybe you can just go for something really fast, yeah, you can definitely win. Or maybe if you can go ahead and like OTK them, maybe you drop this after something, uh, then you'll be good to go. Because like maybe you stun them turn one, they don't have an ant out, and then you can go ahead and just summon another monster and try to push for as much damage as quickly as possible and win through that aspect. Um, Next up, Spell Cancel. This is actually the better uh, choice to uh, anything that can tribute, whether you're playing Burning Abyss or any Pendulum-based deck. I find this to be better than Vandy's and Majesty's and Fossil Dina. The reason why is because you can't use any of your main deck outs to this card because the deck usually does not play any traps. So what it's going to do is it's just going to literally try to sit there and stall until they happen to uh, draw some of the cards that they can use against you. But they can't use anything against Spell Cancel because they can't Dark Hole, they can't Regeki, they can't Book of Eclipse because as long as the card remains face up on the field, the spell cards can't not be activated and the effects of all spell cards are also negated. In the off chance they have uh, Dance Princess of the Necros and the Boosters attack, I guess that can get over, but not everyone has that as an out, so if you're main decking spell counts or you're playing with Burning Abyss or something, maybe you can just get a free instant win because of that. Next up, uh, cards like Vanny's Emptiness and Mistake, uh, they're very good, but the deck does main deck Twisters and it obviously main decks multiple copies of MST because it really needs its uh, monsters to go off. Otherwise, the deck doesn't have any protection because in order for it to be super consistent, it just likes to go for the searches for days. So this can definitely hurt uh, them, but it also can hurt you depending on your deck. But if it's making it so they can't even play, then that's definitely very good. But the problem is if they already happen to have the cards in their hand, then Mistake is completely irrelevant. And uh, sometimes if you draw this like after they already have, you know, been searching, it's just kind of pointless. Some side deck cards are just like that in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, next up, Mirror of the Ice Bear. I know it doesn't look like a quick play on DevPro, but it would be a completely pointless card if the card wasn't quick play. But uh, anyways, um, basically when they Trish you, you get to Trish them back twice as hard. So when they banish one card from your hand, uh, Graveyard and the field, you get to banish up to two from each of those zones. So it's pretty cool for that aspect, but some builds only play one Trishula. I've seen builds that don't even play Trishula. I used to think, oh man, triple Trishula, but this is back in the day when there was no, uh, there was no Call of Solus. There was a lot of lack of, of like support cards for the deck. The, when the deck only had like maybe like five or six cards, 
uh, for the archetype. That's where I was like Trishla forever. But uh, now a lot of players don't even really care too much about going for Trishla over and over as quickly as possible because you don't really need to do that. And there's some more extensive combos uh, in the deck. You don't have to make Trishla all the time. So I feel like this card is only really good against Trishla and it's only going to be used against Necros, where some of these other cards you can actually use against other decks. Like this, for example, Spellcounter, you can maybe use it against Cleese um, as long as you have to have some traps to protect your monster um, when they summon a, a monster. If you're able just to maybe okay maybe with this plus like something that reduces their attack by like you know a few hundred and then at that point you'd be good to go but uh, yeah spell cancer uh, could be used against more things i'm i mean I'm, now that i'm thinking about please they have normal summon pretty much everything but nonetheless it'll slow the deck down definitely but please main skill drain anyways but uh yeah screw, screw spell cancer actually against uh, please that was a bad analogy but uh yeah it's still good against uh the deck loss uh next up uh debunk and um Mind Drain, very good stuff, so if they want to activate stuff in hand, I like Mind Drain better than Debunk, but, uh, you know, maybe if you don't happen to have, well, you should have Mind Drain. This card's amazing against the deck, because it, it just comes down to them just stop, stopping the ability for them just to search for more extra cards. And then Shared Ride is probably the most relevant card that I think players like to run. Uh, it's already been used in the OCG quite frequently, and uh, basically, it's a win-win for you. Whoever activates Shared Ride, you're in a good spot, because... They have two options. They can stop searching, and then you're, you should be okay with that because they stop searching. Or they continue to search, and you continue to draw extra cards. So that's there's like no downside to this card because max C against that deck. I don't think it's that great because maybe you can draw like plus one, but more than likely it's just going to be like you just one for one, and at that point it's like basically an upstart. Uh, next up, Book of Eclipse has been really popular uh, for certain decks that uh, OTK. I don't recommend Book of Eclipse. I recommend just having Darkhold and Smashing Grounds. The deck already main decks a lot of different versions main deck this just to get rid of the lock, but um, there's actually a reason some people are like, oh wow, you're so stupid, why would you flip the monster face down when you can get rid of it? Well, there's some scenarios where you'd rather just banish the card, because uh, generally that deck doesn't really, like I said, throw up back rows, so sometimes there'll only be one monster on the board, and if that one monster stopping you from special summoning, you can just flip it down, banish it, and then the card's banished, and that's much better than having the uh, card just in the graveyard. Uh, next up, um, Oh, also, because of Vakurius, uh, so, uh, there's also another utility uh, aspect to Book of Eclipse, is that you can flip uh, your monster face down, and then from there, um, you can actually uh, stop the Vakurius from getting its effect, uh, which is that it's negating the uh, attack that ending the battle phase, so maybe you can make some extra utility out of Book of Eclipse or Book of Moon or whatever card. Uh, so it, it does have a little bit more utility, but personally for me, uh, I like Dark Hole and Smashing Ground, so these in my opinion, are much better in the main deck, uh, because Book of Eclipse, um, it, well, it all actually depends on what deck you're playing, because sometimes, even if you flip that down the monster, um, let's say that they have that one copy of Solemn Warning, and you go ahead and try to summon to get rid of it, and they're like, no. <laughs> and then you can be at a very bad spot. So I just prefer these cards over. Obviously, Regeki before these, but, you know, most decks will main deck Regeki now, anyways. Because Dark Law is not a fun card to deal with, anyways. Um, next up, the Troll and Lockbird uh, over here. This was used back in the Spellbook days. I don't like this card, that's my personal choice. Um, because I believe with the first card that they add, they still add that anyways, and it's just for the rest of the turn they can't add. But the first card, like, correct me if I'm wrong on this, guys, but the first card they still just get to add it, right? Because it says your opponent adds, uh, it says if your opponent adds a card from the deck of the hand, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard for the rest of the turn, neither player can. And I'm like, well, what's the, like, they already got that one free car extra card off of it. I just don't like that because, like, it's just, Unless you're going to be able to, like, OTK for sure next turn, I just don't like this card. That's just my personal take on it, but some people like it. Uh, Macrocosm's Defish are pretty good. Same with Thunder King, but Thunder King's at one. It, it, again, it's only, like, one of those turn one cards where it's really, really good. And then Chaos Hunter, some people like this because it stops uh, your opponent from uh, banishing cards. Which actually has extra utility because some of their um, rituals, they can banish cards and then they can re-add the uh, ritual. So that's another uh, thing. Well, they actually they get a search. Uh, they don't add the uh, one. It's not like Gishkis, but yeah, nonetheless, uh, they get to uh, basically go plus by banishing uh, from uh, their graveyard. But uh, there's also Imperial Iron Wall that can do the same thing if you're really afraid of Trish. But the deck, like I said, it's actually not that uh, relevant just to throw out Trish. Again, this is back when I used to play when there was only a few cards in the Necros archetype. Uh, that was basically the main play. I think that might have been actually before Brianak. Actually, no, I think Brandock was there, but like I said, there was only a few cards in the deck, so there wasn't, like, Valkyrus or, like, a lot of the other cards. There was a Master Restrict, that's pretty good. Uh, Secret Village, if you're playing any deck that runs Spellcasters, you can just activate this and instantly win, um, because, again, the deck has no back rows. So if you're playing Shadals, this can definitely be a card, um, and uh, if you're going against Cleese, this card would not be bad. 
uh, either because basically they can only summon 1800 attackers and if you summon something with uh, you know more than like if you summon a Shadal Dragon uh, like what did Cleese do unless they happen to have some like you know trap card or something like that But even skill drain won't really stop this because like what are they gonna do against like a 1900 attacker? They basically will just have to cry uh, But yeah, the secret village can definitely be awesome because they can't they can't um, pendulum They can't uh, do the uh, the equip to boost their attack up. So basically this card can give you that instant win uh, Mind Curse can definitely be good, not only to get rid of that certain card in their hand, but also to see your opponent's hand. Trap Dash is banned for a reason, uh, but yeah, this card is really good because it lets you just see your opponent's hand and you can play around it. Skill Drain is pretty good because the deck does not, well, it has to MST the Vanities, and if you play like, you know, three copies of each one, you can really force it so uh, if you just happen to have a few monsters with, uh, you know, extra attack, maybe if you're playing a Skill Drain Malefic deck, you can definitely make use of that. Um, I and mean, especially with like Van Vannies and like Skill Drain can definitely be good because it forces them to use an MST immediately and if you flip up another one they can just cry. Uh, this card is not out yet, uh, just as a heads up. I believe in the I believe it's not out yet. Correct me if I'm wrong on this too, guys. But Diamond Dust is, the, I think, the best side deck card. Uh, it's destroy all water monsters on the field, then inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each monster sent to the graveyard. So um, that is both players. Sometimes you just burn, you know, your opponent for game, which is pretty awesome. But I like this card because it's always, always live. So uh, it destroys all of them too. It's like a surprise regeki to uh, all of the Nakloth players. And they also take damage, so it's like on top of being able to regeki them, you actually inflict a bunch of damage. And then this card, this card doesn't exist in here. Okay, it was supposed to be. I actually grabbed the wrong mind drain, but anyways. Um, also, what's kind of troll um, to do is anti spell fragrance and mass hero acid because if you anti spell fragrance in the first turn, they will set like all their cards. And then if you can just be like, okay, next turn I'm just gonna go mass hero acid, blow up everything, and then they just quit from there. Um, but yeah, and if you can make the Turret Beast, that's also a really good card. This card is another instant like win condition because uh, you can just keep on setting two forever and then they can't, uh, you know, Dark Hole, you know, they can't put him into the face down defense position. So yeah, Book of Eclipse uh, won't be able to be used against that Turret Beast and then the Turret Beast just basically instant wins against the deck. So maybe Raccoons, maybe some Six Samurai deck can definitely poop on the deck because if you have access to the Turret Beast, it's very good. Heck, even Karakuris. Now, I want to talk about cards that the Necros will side deck against you um, because they're going to expect some of you, you guys to side some of these cards. So, Twister and um, Mystical Space Typhoons are usually played at 3, but in the off chance that they don't already have Twister in the main deck because some do like it to deal with Vandies and other cards. Uh, Twister can be definitely very good as well. You do have to pay 500 life points. So that's where the Diamond Dust is really good because sometimes those you know low life points you get in a few attacks, you can just you know make it game because they just took too much damage. Uh, they also tend to like to side the Fire and Ice Hands to try to deal with other things uh, because some of these other cards, like you know Secret Village can definitely get in the way. But yeah, with Fire and Ice Hand, that's more relevant. And the OCU, they've been doing Atlantean Heavy Infantry, which is really interesting. I think that that's kind of a cool uh, choice. And uh, for I don't know what reason, if someone can explain this to me, uh, please do. Uh, the Artifact Lan Lancia, so this card has the effect that uh, during your opponent's turn, you can tribute this card from your hand or face up on your side of the field. Neither player can banish cards for the rest of the turn. This is a quick effect. Um, I know it stops a little bit of the searching in the deck because like it went back to my uh, point before when I was talking about um, them being able to uh, ban, I think it's like banish a necro uh, a Necro's monster and then you can like uh, search your deck for a Necloth uh, spell. Ah, yes, here it is. The Necloth Exomere. So, I think actually all of them actually have this effect, but uh, if you control no monsters, you can banish this card and a Necloth monster from your graveyard. So, maybe if you really wanted to stop them uh, with that, you can use it for that. But I thought it was maybe also used against Trish, because then they can't banish cards. And I was like, well, what about just like effect that? Wouldn't that just be like the same thing? But again, I just don't know this. Maybe I'm wrong on this. Maybe this has other utility that I just don't know of. I know you can, you know, artifact uh, with a Sanctum for it, but... I personally just think effect failure uh it can hit more decks because not every deck is going to be banishing but yeah there you guys go uh that is how you side deck against the uh necros like i mentioned before uh let me go ahead and just like kind of go over like a recap of my personal favorite cards again it all depends on what deck you're playing so uh, i think spell cancer is like an instant like instant win i feel like the secret village of the spell cast can be an instant win um as far as the other cards, I mean, sometimes, again, it all just comes down to, like, having it first turn, um, because sometimes if they just, 
go for a bigger monster, like, you know, certain cards can be kind of useless. But I think that these can just give you that instant win condition that other cards just can't give you. Uh, and then Diamond Dust is probably my my main choice for every deck to play. Like, every deck should be able to run Diamond Dust. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention that I totally skipped out on is Decree. Uh, they also do like to side deck Decree. That's very, very relevant, especially since it basically got reprinted for everyone to have anyway, so, like, they're ready to go anyways. Because they expect to run into the, uh, the well... Macrocosmos can hurt like a lot of different decks, but they expect to run into a lot of the uh, traps that can ruin them. So Royal Decree is definitely very, very relevant. But if you're playing a deck, like I said, that can just throw out first turn Spell Canceler or uh, first turn Secret Village with like a 1900 attacker, uh, sometimes they just simply lose because they they can't MST this card because they don't control a Spellcaster unless they have this card. This this card kind of defeats a lot of the random stuff. So maybe if you're a Necros player, you've uh, already decided to main deck one of these. Or even Grand Mole. That was a card that was kind of popular too. Uh, people would just main deck a Grand Mole just for not only like basically unlimited outs the gin lock because you can just bounce them both back but it also has that extra utility of um getting rid of other random stuff and random decks just like bouncing back the dantes and you know other stuff from other decks but anyways let me know guys what is your favorite card to actually side deck against it or if you felt like i missed out on other great cards that we could have actually side decked uh in here let me know in the comment section below but anyways thanks for watching guys good luck beating some necros asian eyes signing out